Learn how to leverage AI for 10 profitable product niches, just like these. The digital product market is worth more than $950 billion, and it's growing twice as fast as the physical product market. And in the advent of the AI revolution, even bigger opportunities are coming down the pipeline. I've been selling digital products for the last seven years, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you my tips, tricks, and failures from what I've learned. Don't miss out on the opportunity to make digital products with AI. Digital products are not going anywhere, and now is a better time than ever to start creating your own. Digital products allow you to have zero production cost after you've created it, zero inventory cost, and you can sell them an infinite amount of time. It's truly one of the best sources of recursive income available. First up is UI Kits, which is a collection of UI elements, user interface elements, that designers and app developers can use to create interfaces for different products. This involves creating a series of elements that can be used to create apps and websites. Everything from buttons to sliders to radio buttons to forms to actual templates for different designs. This was one of my best selling UI kits. It was jumping on a trend called neomorphism, which was this 3D type of effect that was generated by getting very particular drop shadows and inner shadows. On this one platform, it's made more than $11,000 and it's still selling units every single week. So what you can do with AI to create your own UI kits is to go into a tool like Midjourney and start asking it for UI UX inspiration. This was some of the elements that I was getting out previously. And you can see here that it's fantastic at directing the design approach for creating a unified aesthetic, which you can then take and turn into real components in a tool like Figma or Adobe XD. And this massively increases the speed of generating your own components, as well as creating very beautiful designs. You can see how I've been really experimenting with some beautiful pink and blue dark aesthetic. I, I think there's an opportunity to create a wonderful set of data visualization templates for a UI kit. And from this, I would take a number of things. I would take the colors, I would take some of the graphic approaches, the compositions, as well as using some of these to influence how I would mock up and present the entire kit. One thing to do when you're creating a UI kit is to try and target it at a specific theme, trend, or niche niche. There was this trend of glass morphism that was coming out, which was essentially taking the look and feel of glass and putting it into an interface and creating a UI kit based on this effect is a very great opportunity. Another thing you can do is use a site like Dribble, which is a social network for designers to share their work. It's great for looking at what's popular and what's trending. So you can come onto the site and show the most popular shots by going to the drop down popular and changing the time frame to either the past month or the past year. And you can get a real feel for what is culturally pleasant right now. And this is a great resource for defining the look and feel of your own work. What I recommend doing with UI kits is getting a prototype out quickly and getting feedback on it. If you see that this is something that has an opportunity, you can then go back and expand it. So what I did with this neomorphic kit was first I released the light version, then I went back and recreated all of the elements in a dark mode too. I then went back and even started to create actual app screens for all of the elements together. So this gave me better marketing opportunities and it also expanded the use of the templates that I had created. And I marketed this on Dribble very effectively. So I posted images of the UI kits and you can see I turned it into a little animation and I got a lot of views through this because it was a trending topic that people were interested in. And this is a great opportunity to make the most of using AI to develop your digital products. You can sell these on your own store, on websites like Creative Market or UI8.net, as well as places even like Etsy. So for UI kits, I would actually give this quite a high difficulty rating because you need to have an understanding of how UI components work in different states and in different forms. And you need to be able to explain often how to use some of these in your customer service. So I would give this a five star difficulty, but it is a great product which you can even charge up to two or $300 for a completely comprehensive UI system for. There is a huge opportunity to make the most of uh, UI kits and it's something that 
because it's more difficult, means there is a bigger opportunity to do something different. It's also obviously an evolving area with new user interface situations arriving daily. One opportunity I would see right now is developing new user interface elements for chats because we are using chat so much more with AI. Uh, I think actually there's an opportunity to improve the user experience of working with AI chat applications right now. And I would like to see some more um, creativity put into how we can take that to the next level. Because I certainly don't see in 10 years are still using chat to communicate with AI. If you're serious about making digital products, you're going to have dozens of passwords for different marketplaces, different affiliate accounts, and different softwares. And for that, I recommend using NordPass to manage all of your passwords in one place. Why try to remember 50 passwords when you can remember just one? NordPass. Check out the three month free trial for NordPass in the description below, because password one, two, three, exclamation mark, just won't cut it anymore. Next up is developing digital brushes for different design softwares. You can design brushes for programs like Photoshop, Procreate, or Affinity Designer. And these are great at helping other designers and artists speed up their process. I was selling a number of Procreate brushes, and this was one of my best selling packs, which was a set of brushes that replicated authentic tattoo design tools. So there are tattoo artists who are now designing their tattoos in the iPad app Procreate. And this allows them to massively recreate the actual effects you would get from a needle gun. And across all marketplaces, this single product has easily made tens of thousands of dollars for me. This is a product that actually sells very well on Etsy. And you can see that this seller, Eleanor, has made more than 20,000 sales and at an average of $10 per sale, this can equate to at least $200,000 in revenue. There is this great tool called Allura, which can give you the stats behind different Etsy shops. So if you just come in here to their product seeker and type in Procreate brushes, it will give you a general idea of how some shops are performing. I don't believe that all of the data is comprehensive in this because it doesn't look like it shows up some shops, but it does give you a good ballpark figure for how some products are performing. And you can change the different columns here to see revenue, monthly sales, monthly revenue, and total sales. So if we change revenue, you can see that it's giving us different currencies, which is a little bit confusing, but it does give you an idea, if we look at monthly sales, how much some people are selling. You can see here that they're saying that this shop, that this product is making 1,700 euros from one single product, which is this mega pack of Procreate designs. You can then even go onto Etsy from Allura to see how they are getting on. So how can you make digital brushes with AI? Well, Adobe Firefly is introducing a brand new way to develop brushes from just a few words, and they've previewed this in some of their latest videos. So that's one thing to watch out for. But right now, you can even use a tool like Midjourney to massively speed up your process of generating digital brushes. Many different creative industries make use of digital painting tools, everything from fashion to interior design, from tattoo artists to animators. And it's possible to create sets of brushes that target each of these disciplines and help people speed up their workflow. Here are some other products that I have created targeted at digital art. There is a set of jewelry brushes for jewelry designers. There is a set of fur brushes for those artists making animal portraits. And I've even gone with some 3D human models, which allows tattoo artists to represent their designs on a real 3D body. So you can see how different tattoo designs would show up. Or there are pixel brushes for game designers creating different game sprites. So you can use AI art generators to one, help you create the brushes by creating vector shapes and textures which you can combine into digital brushes. You can also use it to help you create marketing screens to show off how these brushes can be used. This can be simply creating beautiful examples of, for instance, watercolor artworks, and then using your brushes to 
imitate the artworks that you've created. There are a lot of different angles that you can take with these platforms. Everything from creating stamps, to creating paper textures, to creating 3D models, and many more. I also highly recommend creating a library of products and then bundling them all together for a higher ticket option. This can really be where you make the majority of your revenue. And it's really important to remember that it takes a while to build up a library of products that you can turn into a successful bundle. But bundles are great because you can also partner with other websites to promote and sell your bundles for you. So for brushes, there is a great opportunity to create creative tools for digital design applications. I would give this a four star difficulty, but there is a fantastic opportunity. And the use of design tools is not going anywhere. And people will always look for ways to speed up their workflow and create better work. Next up, we have product mockups. And this is creating images or videos of different types of products where people can put their own designs on them to create marketing and preview images. This was one of the product types that I had a lot of success with. And one of my most successful products ever was this set of minimal mockups, which is simply a set of androgynous product mockups that people can put their websites, logos, or apps inside of to preview. This started life as only three different products in one set. So it was just a phone, an iPad, and a laptop. I then expanded that to include 50 different types of devices, as well as a light and dark theme. I also expanded it from working just with Photoshop to then working with Illustrator, Figma, and Sketch. Essentially, it's very important to get a small version of your product out early, an MVP. And as soon as you see that you're getting some sales, some interest, you can double down on that and make it a comprehensive, useful, expansive tool. And what's a great tactic is to then also tell people that you're gonna be updating it, as well as messaging all of the customers who have already purchased your product, saying, I've just released a free update. So you can get an extra 50 devices for free. And when you do that, people are very likely to leave a review because they're suddenly getting way much more than they'd already expected. Another thing you can do is obviously start off with a low price. So I think I started off with about $9 for just these three items. And then I upped the price to $27. Another way to make sure you're getting the most uh, revenue from each product is to have different levels of licensing available. So the introductory license is a personal license, which limits the uses that people can use it for. Usually it's about using it on social media for a certain amount of views. But there are lots of other licenses available that you can give. And this is where you can really get a high return on each individual sale. For example, if you're offering like a print on demand license, which allows people to take your work and print it out on other merchandise and sell it for themselves, you can charge hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per license. And it's important to understand how you're approaching these licensing deals, as well as not pitching yourself too low. Because if you don't recognize that you can sell a print on demand license for thousands of dollars, and you're only selling it for 10 or $20, you're missing out on huge amounts of revenue. So this one for me on this one platform, so as sold more than $16,000 in profit. And what's great is we can use AI art generators like Midjourney to create our own high quality mockups much more quickly. So you don't actually have to sit there creating the mockups in Illustrator or setting up scenes of real life and taking photographs of t-shirts or mugs or frames and then going into Photoshop and changing those into smart objects that people can use to create their own art. Here are some of the mockups that I've been playing around with inside of Midjourney. Uh, especially creating framed mockups. These are particularly popular. Obviously here you can see that there are still watermarks, so you can easily edit these and erase these in Photoshop, as well as making sure that you go into Photoshop and you add in a smart object layer, which allows people to quickly insert their own designs. An added bonus is that you can add in some shadow layers on top of your artworks to give them a slight more sense of realism, as well as taking your work to the next level, which means that you're adding an extra part of creativity that stops it just being a mock-up that someone has generated very quickly in mid-journey, but it's now a cohesive collection of artworks that has that extra touch of realism added in. So for example, you can add in shadow layers. For example, these magazine mock-ups that I had created, I added these shadows on top to give them uh, an extra feel 
of lifeness, which also means that when you put the designs to be mocked up on the cover of these magazines, that it helps them look fully integrated and real. So it's a great tip to make sure that your mock-ups are working really well and that people's designs don't look like mock-ups anymore. They actually look like real product photographs. I also created a set of uh, animated shadows. So this is something that I think is an opportunity to, to do, is creating animated product mock-ups. So what you do is you're taking a flat image from mid-journey, then you're adding in an animated shadow layer to create a comprehensive collection of product mock-ups that are slightly different, more eye-catching, and they certainly set you apart from others. And this is, of course, the trick in all business, and especially when creating digital products, is you need to go the extra mile. You need to set yourself apart from other products. And I'm gonna give you as many different ideas here that you can use to add that unique selling point to your offering. And then what's really important is once you have identified a unique selling point that people are relating to, you need to double down on that and make sure that you're making the most of it. And that when people search for that specific term, for example, like animated shadow overlays, that you are dominating the search results because you were there first, you have the best product and you understand the market. So if we take a look at Etsy, how people are doing with their mock-up bundles, you can see that of course, some of the best selling products are gonna be these huge bundles of say a thousand mock-ups. And this person is selling this at $40 and they've got more than 3,800 sales. So they've definitely been making a solid, probably four or five figure income per month on this product alone. But you don't need to go as far as this to make a solid income. I highly recommend starting off with a very targeted specific use case. The more narrow and targeted you can do it, the better your chance of success is. So right now, if you're just starting out and you want to make product mockups, don't do a t-shirt, don't do a mug, don't do a framed wall print. Do something more original. And if you need some ideas, you can use a tool like ChatGPT to get your mind rolling. You can come into ChatGPT and say, give me 20 ideas for Photoshop product mockups that are unusual and original. For example, don't include a t-shirt. So now it will come up with lots of different ideas and this gives you more options for how you want to create your mockups. Some of these are still a little bit obvious like book cover and sneakers, but some are better. Things like a, a scarf or an umbrella, a guitar pick. I think that's a really interesting area, creating a guitar pick mock-up. So I suggest starting off with very obscure niche areas. And then as you're slowly building an audience, a brand, an understanding of how the product works, you can start to target more popular use cases. And this is a good mantra to take for any of these digital product approaches always start with a really specific niche where you can create a product that's going to be more original. So these are fairly easy to create. They don't require a lot of knowledge or forethought and you can create them easily in a couple of hours and be live on the same day. Next up is one of my favorite digital products and that is fonts. Fonts never go out of fashion and every year people are looking for new trends to use with fonts. What's great about fonts is you can actually command a very high price if you're offering a comprehensive product. For example, a very popular font is Proxima Nova and for all 48 styles, this will cost $734 for a single usage. So I love the opportunity there is with the fonts because there are so many narrow use cases for different fonts that you can target. Everything from targeting specific languages to specific styles. It's not an area that I created a lot of products for. I did make a couple of fonts. This was a hand-drawn font that I made in Procreate. It took me less than a day to make and it's simply based on my own handwriting. And it's only made $500 on this one platform, but in total, it's made multiple thousands of dollars. And of course, I made three or four fonts in total and put them into a bundle, and that has made the most revenue for me in the font market. And you can see here, it's really good to take your fonts and mock them up in different situations so people can imagine how you can use this tool. Now, what's really interesting is the AI tools coming down the pipeline that are helping us create fonts more quickly. I love the option in Adobe Firefly, which allows you to create these beautiful letter forms with intricate details on top and the opportunity to create very specific, engaging, and beautiful fonts is going to expand immensely. Here you can see that they've inserted the text prompt 
the letter N made of gold with intricate ornaments. And you can see it's made this beautiful three-dimensional typeface. You can change how you want the design around the typeface to be. This example shows the letter N made from green and red moss. Mm, beautiful, mossy, just beautiful moss indeed. And this option is the letter N made of red particles. So this is one way that you can start creating innovative original fonts very quickly. Here is another beautiful example of a, a cake based ice cream font. And there are some interesting tools. This is one that I've been exploring, Prototypo, which allows you to design stronger identities with bespoke fonts. It allows you to create an original font by shifting a few sliders around and getting your own font design, which you can then take as a base to expand on and design your own real font. And of course, you can even use Midjourney to create your own specific letter forms. So you can go through with this almost ornate botanical feel for creating letter forms and create some beautiful, intricate typefaces. And the global font and typeface market is growing. At the moment, it's worth $965 million and is expected to reach $1.2 billion by 2028. We can take a look at a shop on Etsy that's got more than 14,000 sales and it's got a revenue of at least $50,000. I would say this is a more difficult product to create and possibly a four star difficulty but the upside is immense. Say goodbye to spreadsheets full of passwords and say hello to NordPass with the only password you will ever need. I used to be a very naughty boy and store all of my passwords on pieces of paper or on <laughs> the odd spreadsheet. And if you're looking to keep your loved ones safe, there is also a family plan that allows you to share a bundle of NordPass services. Next up, we have creating guide templates. And one approach I had a lot of success with on this was creating brand guideline templates. This was my most successful brand guidelines, the minimal brand identity guidelines. And it's simply a book which allows different brands to define all of their assets. So their logos, their colors, their fonts and it gives them lots of different templates to quickly create that document that can be shared around their teams to make sure everyone is on the same page when they're creating brand assets. And this one, yes, on this one platform, I made more than $15,000 in profit. And what's great about this is once you create a template like this, you can actually reskin it with a different look and feel. So you can take all of the content, all of the layouts and change the colors, the fonts and the images, and you've got an entirely new product that you can sell because people are actually buying not just the content, they're actually buying the style. So if you create a wonderful font pairing with an excellent typographic hierarchy paired with beautiful colors that match a singular brand ethos in an effective way, you've got a product that is extremely valuable to many people. So I created a few other brand guideline options. There was the, a brand guide and the elegant brand style guide. And both of these on this one platform have made thousands of dollars in profit and hundreds of sales. And of course, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bundle them together and sell a brand guideline bundle. So how can we use AI to create better guides? Well, one thing you can do is use ChatGPT to create the content. So example, You can massively create usable content that people can take as a template for defining their own values. Example here, this is explaining the values that are being used. I had these sections in my brand guidelines. I had to write them myself, make sense. And I am not trained in copywriting. So this was certainly an area that was challenging and took a lot of time and forethought. But now we can massively speed that up. And you're thinking, perhaps why would someone not just do that? do that themselves in ChatGPT. Well, what you're doing is actually you're writing better prompts, you're doing it for them, and you're speeding up the process. So they've already got the prompt written, they just have to go through and change out a few variables. So for example, you could bring together a library of different brand values and have the content already there. So here you can see that the content written by ChatGPT is perfect. Integrity. We act with honesty, transparency, and respect for others in everything we do. And then of course, you can use Midjourney to get better inspiration for ideas for page layouts and for general overall style and aesthetic. Because one of the most important things for selling these types of products is the overall style and aesthetic. I would spend probably 50% of the time just defining the look of this product. The rest of it would be just 
cascading down the design decisions that have been made at the very top. What's great about this product type is that it saves people a lot of time and there are a lot of different approaches that you can take. One that I'm particularly interested in at the moment is creating Airbnb guides. So when somebody is renting out their apartment on Airbnb, they create a booklet for visitors, which will have information about how to use certain appliances or about restaurants and locations to visit in the vicinity. Creating a booklet like this is great because it stops the host having to explain the same thing a hundred times and it helps them provide an experience for people that feels more curated, more intelligent, more beautiful, more fun. So I think actually creating basic guides based on different locations is a great way to start. So you can create a Airbnb guide where you are adding in all the sections, say about a city like Lisbon, you're putting it in a beautiful cover with wonderful images and you're leaving different areas for people to fill out themselves. So if they've got specific information about checking in and checking out, they can add that in. Another one that I think is a good area is creating a guide for life coaches and mentors. So you're creating a workbook for people to work through, defining their values, defining their goals, organizing their time. So if you're working as a consultant and you're providing people with essentially a summary of the session that you have with people, putting that into an attractive workbook helps people feel that they got their money's worth. So you can actually target different types of consultants like life coaches, business coaches, uh, therapists, and even uh, instructors like uh, singing coaches, music coaches, sports coaches, developing guides that individual entrepreneurs can use to turn into a product themselves to sell to their clients is a great opportunity. And you can make such wonderful creations now very quickly using all of these tools together. So if you're using Midjourney, ChatGPT, and say Canva, in just a couple of days, you can get a very usable product that you can then go on to sell. And of course, you have the opportunity to expand it as you see yourself getting sales. So if you're saying, wow, this is selling well, let's make it even better. If you give someone like a 200 page document, they're going to feel like they got the value for money too. What's also particularly good about this type of product is it's not one that relies on trends and it is likely to be evergreen. Some of the downfall of some of these products is that they might go out of fashion. For example, the Neomorphic UI kit that I had was very much hinging on a trend and that slowly went down as this went out of fashion in the UI space. So I would give this a three star difficulty and it's definitely a great option. Next up, we have children's books. And did you know that 52% of readers make their choice of a book based on the cover artwork? And that's why we have a great opportunity to design beautiful covers with Midjourney and give ourselves the best opportunity to get sales for our books. I've created a number of children's books and I've had a lot of fun doing this as well. And so much fun that I actually created an entire course on making and selling children's books with AI. In that, we use AI to research, write, and illustrate an entire story. This is a great digital product because it's also one that you can turn into a physical product in a number of different ways. Firstly, you can use print-on-demand services to actually offer a physical product as well. And you can even get your book printed and put them in stores. So if you do have a success with this, it's very easy to scale into a bigger business. You can see people are also selling on Etsy. This individual is selling a personalized children's book, which is a very interesting way to approach it too. Adding a level of personalization to your books. This seller has had over a hundred, wow, this one has had over a hundred thousand sales. So we can imagine that their revenue is huge personalized children's books. Wow, that looks like a great market. I was certainly looking into that more. So another thing you can do on Allura is you can come into Shop Analyzer, which is another tool available that helps you identify some stats to make informed decisions about your product choices. And you can see that they've had revenue in excess of $3 million. And that's just in the last five years. So you think they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars each year with these personalized children's books. So this is a very lucrative niche to move into. I will be using niche and niche interchangeably right now. I think it's a, an American English difference. I don't know what I prefer anymore. Sometimes I've spent so much time with Americans that I start saying niche, but it feels a little bit difficult to me. I like saying niche, 
Nietzsche. But then I always think of Friedrich Nietzsche. Okay, we're going off topic. I think, therefore, AI. <gasps> I think that was John Paul Sartre though, isn't it? <laughs> Man who can bear any how can bear any why. Okay, let's get back. So some interesting areas that you could target with children's books is explaining difficult topics, for example, death, spirituality, meditation, empathy. Uh, adding in some level of teaching gives it an extra use. So it's no longer just a story, but it's actually really focused on delivering a piece of information in an entertaining way. A little bit like what I'm trying to do here. Ho, oh, hey! <laughs> Another angle that you can take on the digital book is coloring books. So this is actually allowing people to color in the pages and you can create beautiful, uh, actual usable artworks in Midjourney like this one that I created. And you can just simply create a collection of 20 of these and sell them as a digital product. And they're extremely popular. We can have a look on Etsy again at some coloring books. Yep, and this is another shop that has had 48,000 sales. They, it does look like they're selling a few other types of products as well, but it's um, opportunity there is ripe, especially if you're targeting a really interesting area. So you might have like a book just about dogs or even a type of dogs, golden retrievers for people who have an obsession with golden retrievers. I would give this, it's actually not such a difficult area to move into as well because it's very simple to create a book. You're simply putting images together. I would give it a two star difficulty. Next up, now this is a really interesting and original approach and one that I see growing massively. Uh, and that's actually creating AI social media accounts. And there are a couple of interesting things you can do with this. For example, you can create an account in the likeness of someone who's no longer here. About the ethics and other concerns about this, I will not go into at the moment, but for, for example, there was this recent interview in a German magazine with an AI version of Michael Schumacher, who was an F1 driver who unfortunately had a horrendous skiing accident, which left him paralyzed. The editor of this magazine was actually fired after releasing this interview. But it is showing that people are creating content via AI in the guise of other people. And one opportunity I was interested in working on was recreating a account of Alan Watts, who was a British philosopher who is now dead, but he wrote some beautiful things. And I believe his insights on technology these days would be very profound and important. So I started working on creating an AI version of Alan Watts with mid-journey images and then using other tools to combine it into videos that were him commenting on modern day issues. Of course, you could also create AI generated uh, sexual content that you could put on OnlyFans or really target very strange fetishes because people pay the most amount of money for sexual things. It is an opportunity to create a very like niche approach to some very specific fetish and to create content around that. It's not something that I will personally do, but, but what's great if you are looking just to make money is that number one, this is a very new option. There is gonna be very low competition and you have the opportunity to create things very quickly. So there are a number of other digital products that I thought about including in this video and I'll just give you a really quick run through of some of those so you can have other ideas in your mind. Uh, creating CVs, you're generating tailored CVs for different circumstances. You're writing the content, but also designing them and selling them as a template. Logo libraries, creating a huge library of vector logos that designers can use to craft logos for their clients. So they're using this as a base and they're then able to change the fonts, the colors, the elements of the logos to speed up their process. Invites, wedding invite templates. People spend inordinate amounts of money on weddings and they take care over the actual invites. So if you're giving them a beautiful set of invitations that are also matching, say, to the cards on the table, the menu, the signage, this whole collection of wedding design paraphernalia is actually a great product and one that you can easily put at a high ticket price because people just want to spend a load of money on their weddings. Social media templates is another area you can explore. There's a lot of opportunity to create very specific collections of social media templates for fitness instructors, for therapists, for yoga instructors, for dog groomers, for people who are promoting their own businesses and need some consistent templates to create from. And another area, one that I have worked in quite a lot is brand identity. So if you create an entire brand library 
for a company. This is an amazing opportunity. So what you would do is you would create the brand guidelines, the logo, you create the social media, a website template, and put all of this together into a whole entire ready-made brand. Uh, you can charge thousands of dollars for that. And beyond that, you can even offer people personalization services. So you can easily double or triple the price you're offering for this. So if you're a brand designer, for example, you can set up a design studio where you've already got some structured brand options. So you might have five different brand packages. You're selling each of these for say $1,000, but you're also offering personalization services so that a company can get everything they need to stand out as their own brand. And I did work for a while crafting different brands for different companies. And what's great about branding is you can really charge a huge amount and justify it very easily because you're saying this is a brand that will last forever in people's memories. And people don't buy products, they buy brands. Okay, warning, warning, warning. There was a very interesting comment on a recent video of mine about creating stock imagery. And they asked me, do I actually have any skin in the game? Uh, does this actually work for me? Well, I have been creating digital products for the last seven years, but it has not been plain and easy sailing. And for every product that I have that made tens of thousands of dollars, I have 10 that have made less than 100. And I know that for me, I live by the mantra that the first sale is the hardest. As soon as you've made one sale, it's like opening the floodgates for hundreds more because you can use that sale to massively build momentum. First of all, you can ask the person about what they liked, what they didn't like, what more would they like to see. You can get a review and a testimonial from them. You can also ask them about what other types of products they would want. But the most important thing is to validate that someone will actually buy the product that you've made. Some of my best advice that I could give you is try to make as many products as you can that are incredibly simple and easy to make. Instead of spending, say, like a month making one product and you think it's amazing, people are going to love it, and then you get it out there and nobody buys it, and you're like, God, that was a bloody waste. This digital product malarkey is an absolute load of... And be honest, it's, this is not a type of project where you can simply say, Hey, ChatGPT, make me a millionaire. Me. But this is an opportunity to work hard, to be intelligent and creative and combine different product types in unique ways by targeting certain slices of the market and really serving them fully. You can carve out a living and it's easily possible to make billions of dollars with this if you're right at the top of understanding how this works but it's a slow process and you have to gain the intuition the understanding of business essentially i think one of the lessons that i would apply to myself if i was to go back and give myself advice seven years ago would be to start implementing processes for building your products start designing a pipeline where you can systematize and automate some of the process because there are some product areas that I had some success in. And if I had actually gone back and created a process to employ other people to help me expand my library, I could easily, I think, of 10 x some of my revenues. For example, on the brand guidelines, I think there was an opportunity, instead of I made like four or five versions, if I had made 50 versions, made a shop specifically for brand guidelines, I think there was an opportunity to make huge amounts of money just on that niche. But for me, one of my own personal problems is that I can get a little bit bored sometimes. And it's more fun for me to start trying a different product type and learn about something new and challenge myself in a new way. And that is exactly why I have spent the last six months uh, creating YouTube videos, because I really want to learn uh, new skills and apply my understanding of design in a new way. And a couple of other things to be concerned about is that people will, will copy you. If you have a success, people will take what you've done and copy you. And on the flip side of this, it's also good when you are starting out to obviously take inspiration from what other people are doing, but of course, put your own unique spin on it. But I have personally been frustrated with some people taking my own products and reselling them themselves. And I've asked Etsy to take these down. And obviously they have, but Number one, it's reduced my sales. Number two, it's reduced my brand value. And number three, it's extremely disheartening. And this is a difficulty and a problem that exists in the digital product market. So I encourage you to also think about how you can make sure you're building a brand that people will relate to. So you're not just building a single product that people will buy and never come back to. 
you need to think about how you can actually create a connection with your customers so that you're building an audience. And this is the secret to longevity in creating a sustainable digital product business. If you are curious about going deeper into this and learning more, I have a number of courses which could be of use to you. The first is Making and Selling AI Art, which is where we'll actually go through in depth my process of creating AI art for a number of different situations. We'll look more in detail at researching different marketing opportunities, as well as creating listings that convert. Another course I have is Make and Sell a children's book with AI, where we go through the entire process of creating a children's book together. This is a lot of fun. It's And of course, also, you have the opportunity to make money from it. But I particularly enjoyed the process of this. It was a really fun project. And I, I love creating stories. Because remember that a password that's easy to remember is a password that's easy to hack. People have extraordinarily bad password hygiene. Here are a couple of facts that surprised me. 59% of people use the same password everywhere. Yes, sometimes I did do that. I'm sorry, I don't have a memory like a machine. Well, that's why you need NordPass. Men are famous for using hobbies inside of their passwords. And one of the most popular is Tiger Golf. Check out the three month free trial for NordPass in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited about and make sure to watch this video next.